Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video, and uh, we are going to be looking at a team I just recently profiled. Uh, it's the Slow Hellcat Unkillable Team, and I did it for Ultra Nightmare, and I talked about it as the easiest one key possible, the fastest, the easiest, and I stand by that statement. Obviously, there's some people that, you know, talked about in my comments how it's all legendaries, OP gear, and that's absolutely true, but I think it's important to recognize that to get a one key Ultra Nightmare, is a very high bar to cross. It's not easy to do. I don't care what account you have, right? It takes good gear and it takes good champions just to be able to do that. There is no real shortcut to making that happen. The closest thing we can come to is getting a solid speed tune so you can maximize your champion's abilities, getting more attacks in, that sort of thing, right? Being unkillable, making sure you last the full 50 turns without having to build any defense on your champions. So those are, you know, part of that equation but i do feel like that team is still the easiest to do and the basic reason why is the gear requirement to make that team work is still lower than many other teams out there now to get to one key obviously you need some op champions and some op gear but you don't have to have those champions and even if you can't get to a one key getting to a two key with this team is pretty darn easy and very accessible and so what i wanted to do today because i had a lot of people asking hey you know who can i sub in can i use some epics or whatever and a lot of people asking hey can you show this on nightmare yada 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 so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to show you this same team but with epic champions on nightmare and the basic reason behind this is obviously to show you there are multiple ways to build this team and have great success with it and you know you can bring in some amazing epic champions and still get incredibly good results in fact i'm very confident to say that if you used only epic champions you could get a one key on ultra nightmare now is it going to be consistent will it work for all affinities maybe not as much not as easily or maybe you just need even better gear than i have which to be fair is a high bar but the point is, it's possible. The number one thing when building a clan boss team is not your champions, it is your gear. And so regardless of what level account you are, regardless of what numbers you're trying to hit, the gear is what's going to hold you back nine times out of ten. So just kind of keep that in mind as we're going through this. So I did build out epic champions. I did build them out as strong as I could. And I tried this on Ultra Nightmare. Now, I won't say this is a fully optimized team here uh, because I built it kind of quickly and threw a lot of this together. But on Ultra Nightmare, I think I was doing about 60 million damage, which is almost a one key. It's really darn close. And I feel like with some tweaking, maybe using a couple different champions or, you know, if I had a couple of epics that I'm classically mixing... <laughs> For rocking the fad, why? Um, then I feel like I might have an even better chance of actually getting to that one key damage, right? And so, and obviously, you know, if you have a couple of legendaries to mix in there, it becomes a lot easier. So when I restrict myself to saying only epics, it's a pretty big restriction because most of you will have one or two legendaries that could slot in there and do even more damage or better results along the way. So just kind of caveat that out but this is going to be an incredibly good epic team here and i'm going to show this on nightmare i would love to show this on ultra nightmare but i feel like i've done a lot of ultra nightmare videos and people are always like what does it do on nightmare how can i do this on nightmare so we're going to go ahead and show that here and you should be able to get an idea of like hey yeah i don't need all these crazy legendaries to do crazy damage I really appreciate you coming by to watch this video, and if you enjoy it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. And of course, if you enjoyed today's music, we have that Soundstripe link down below in the pinned comment description of this video, along with my code, Deadwood Jedi to save yourself 15%. And of course, if you're looking for account work, you can find that on my website, DeadwoodJedi.com. All right, this is the team that I'm going to be using today. And I think, I hope, I hope you guys notice I'm not even using the most OP of epics here. I really wanted to mix this up and show you that you can get amazingly good results using a variety of champions. Now, I have Aothar in here, who I think is highly underrated as a clan boss champion. He puts up four poisons for two turn durations each. It's a really strong ability, and he hits hard. On top of that, if you turn off his A3 like I did, you're going to actually be able to use Giant Slayer to really good effect. He's going to be doing over two attacks per turn when you average them out, and that's going to make Giant Slayer a preferred choice instead of war master for your tier six mastery and he's actually
excellent at this. Absolutely phenomenal. So definitely somebody I recommend. Uh, he does have a really nice attack aura too. I don't know if I mentioned that. And then we also have Anax in here. And now Anax is an amazing clan boss champion. He hits stupidly hard. In fact, better than many legendaries out there. So he's actually a preferred choice for many clan boss builds. Now, with an axe, he does have a decreased defense on his A1 skill, which is something I absolutely love for him to be able to use. Now, in this team, he's the only champion with that ability, so I need him to use it more often. Normally, his A2 ability, which can place up to two poisons, would be something I'd keep on. But because of that A1 ability, because it's so crucial that we use it, and it hits stupid hard, we're just going to use that. In fact, I'm actually going to turn off his A3 skill as well. The A3 is a single attack, so it does less damage compared to some of the other attacks that he brings, and it brings a weakened debuff. Well, we have Hellcat already on this team. We don't really need it, and keeping decreased defense up for the full fight is way more important than any other debuff we can bring. So this is going to be, I think, hopefully a really nice build for us here. Now, you might be going, okay, we're going to be low on poisons then, right? Well, the thing is, we got Aethar bringing four, and then I also have Doom Priest here bringing in a, a toxic set so doom priest and a toxic set is going to allow us to hopefully fill up the debuff bar without overfilling it and i think that'll be good for this run overall now obviously those poisons aren't as good as the five percenters but it should be a solid enough damage boost to hopefully get us a really nice result here and then of course doom priest is an amazing champion for clan boss as well because she's going to cleanse every single turn and that's going to keep this team affinity friendly at the top of every turn, she goes first, and that cleanses all the debuffs we have. And yes, you can use Doom Priest on not just Nightmare, but Ultra Nightmare as well. The only thing we have to be careful of when using Doom Priest is we need to be careful of Hellcat taking the stun. I think on Nightmare it's fine, but on Ultra Nightmare I'm pretty sure that actually Hellcat will go at the top of the order after the stun, and so Doom Priest won't have a chance to cleanse that. If that's the case, you're going to be in trouble there. So if you want Hellcat to be the stun target, you have to have a debuff, a block debuff champion in. But we don't need to worry about that. We're going to have Doom Priest here, and we have three affinity champions uh, also on this team in Aethar, Anax, and Chani, and all of those can take the stun for us instead. Now, the next champion, of course, is Chani, who's fantastic for this and a highly underrated champion for clan boss. I said Aethar might be the most. Chani would be a close second because she hits stupid hard and has some really nice skills. First off, she has an HP burn with that A2 ability, and her A3 ability actually extends the duration of debuffs on the clan boss, which is phenomenal. So, uh, not to mention, she has a passive that gives herself more crit rate uh, for every point of attack that she or accuracy that she has, which is really bonkers. So, she's incredibly good, and that's why I actually have her at a lower crit rate. She's going to have 100% when all of her buffs and accuracy is factored in there. So, she's going to be incredibly good for this team and allow us to have those poisons from Aether are actually going to last three turns because of Chani's extension, which is going to be really positive for us overall. And then, of course, last we have Hellcat. And Hellcat is you know the one that makes this all happen with the block debuff ability, the massive shield for the stun. Um, just an incredibly strong champion, plus brings that weakened debuff, which we need. Um, and so we're going to have everything we need. Poisons, decreased defense, and weaken. Perfect, perfect team. This is why it's so easy to build, because the only fast champion is Hellcat. 245 everybody else can be nice and slow now the one thing we have to of course watch out for is the stun and i'll talk about that as we get into the run ways to mitigate that ways to make that easier for you to survive it um and you know the other thing of course is like we turned off skills with the next we could definitely pick some different champions in here to help make this a smoother team and a better team as far as damage goes but like I said, I want to try something a little bit off meta and see what we can do. So that's what we're going with here, and I think it should be a good result. Okay, we're going into the run right here right now. Now, great part about this, I can do full auto, and I don't have to really worry about anything else. I can just click auto, and it's going to run, and everything should be set up nice and perfectly here, um, which is great. Uh, and as we get into this, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about what's happening. You see those poisons from Aethar? Well, Chani here is going to actually extend the duration of those um, if she crits. Now, she's weak affinity, so that's not going to happen all the time, um, and that's definitely an issue as far as going forward and making this whole thing work, but that is one way to make it happen, um, and she should be doing that for at least a majority of the fight. Now, Anax, like we talked about, I turned off everything but that A1 skill. You can see, even without decreased defense out there, she's doing about 150, or he's doing about 150,000 damage on that A1 skill. Crazy numbers. It only gets better when we do put the decreased defense out there, which he's just not landing right now because he's being stubborn. Um, but you can see we've got Weaken from Hellcat. We've got Poisons from Aethar. 
Hopefully we get a nice little extension right here from Chani. We'll see if that goes. And there you go. You can see that extension. We have the decreased defense up. And now all of a sudden this team is going to be start doing stupid, stupid damage numbers, which is fantastic. Now, like I said, on Nightmare, we can set this up to run basically full auto. On Ultra Nightmare, we could probably do the same thing. It's just, you know, there's because we missed that first turn for four of these champions, sometimes we need to you know manual that first turn just to set up the skills in the most optimal way but it's not always necessary um now as far as like the stun and stuff like that goes with this you can see that the shield from hellcat is incredibly strong and will protect everybody for that stun as that's what goes up there but it does fall off of Aothar, and Aothar is the slowest champion in this comp and that's the reason why it falls off so actually even though i have Aothar in the lead right now He's not actually a valid stun target, which is problematic for sure. The three champions that are, though, Doom Priest, Chani, and Anax, all would be very valid stun targets, people that would be great to have take that stun. And if I were building this as an actual team I would use all the time, I would actually swap the positions of Doom Priest and Aothar. And I do that now, except Doom Priest has an aura that would make both of them go a little bit too fast. So without having to change the gear up from what I already have, because I know this works, you know this is kind of where we're at but normally i would swap those let doom priest continue to have that shield and then doom priest can take the stun and cleanse it as far as surviving the stun of course there's a couple ways to help do that because this team might not last a full 50 turns on nightmare it should but on ultra nightmare it probably falls a little bit short and there's a couple easy ways to fix this obviously i can give more defense to my stun targets right chani aothar even doom priest anax they all have very low defense which isn't really helpful. And that attack from the stun is actually based on your champion's max HP. So the best way to mitigate that damage from the stun attack is actually just to put less HP on these champions. So Chani's a stun taker in this team. The best thing I could do is actually lower her HP considerably. And that would mean the hits are a lot weaker. So the shield that we get from Hellcat becomes a lot stronger. So that's a simple way to do it. We could also give Hellcat an increased defense buff before he places that shield. That would be super helpful. This is why I usually run a martyr in these type of teams. And I think she's a perfect fit, but there's plenty of options as far as champions that can do that. Um, another option would be obviously to increase your defense, but between those three things, those are the ways that we would mitigate the damage from the stun. Strength and buff is another really good option too. Um, but you can see we have a fairly full debuff bar, right? We've got poisons up. If we can get that decreased defense, it's great. We've got poison sensitivity. We definitely have that weekend going on there get the extension of course is wonderful so you can see we have typically about a eight debuffs on the clan boss at all times which can go even higher up to 10 with doom priest if she does land that poison the you know the toxic poisons right there like she just did so there's always options as far as building this out now another way i could go is not use Zoom Priest in Toxic Set, just put her in regular attack kind of gear and then bring in another Poisoner instead of somebody like Chani or, you know, with a Nax, not disable that A2 skill. That's always a possibility as well, but I love watching a Nax do really good damage here. And you can see we aren't keeping decreased defense up for the full fight. And that's one of the negatives with this type of a team is that a Nax isn't super consistent because he's not taking two attacks every turn right he's only getting one shot at it and his a1 isn't 100 consistent i think it's like a 30 percent chance to land or 60 percent chance to land on two hits so we are going to drop that sometimes now you know if i had a counter attack in here if we were going at a two one ratio i think anax could do this job fine by himself but in this type of team we actually might have better results bringing in somebody like a fane instead of a chani and that might be a really good approach to this if i had a farak in the fat that would actually be my preferred choice get a little ally attack in there still get some poison still get that hp burn and we have another source of decreased defense not to mention the buffs he places on everybody on this team but i don't have one on my account and so until we get one i think this is still a pretty good option plus i wanted to use chani i want to use aethar try try some different champions for you guys out there because i've been hearing for a long time how good chani is and never had a chance to actually bring her into a clan boss team and really show it off so that's the team you can see we're doing about I don't know, two and a half, one and a half million damage per turn, which is very good. And obviously it's nightmare, but I think this gives you a good example of how this type of team can work. So we'll go ahead and skip to the end of this run and come back and take a look at the champions.
pretty good result. 64 million damage. We basically lasted 50 turns on that too, which I think is pretty remarkable considering we lost a couple champions along the way. I mean, Chani went down to the stun at turn 42. Now, obviously weak affinity, but that's to be expected. She's a stun target, right? Um, but like I said, we could lower her defense or up her defense, lower her HP. Those would be amazing ways to improve her survivability. Another thing that I kind of forgot to mention, but giving her some natural healing like a lifesteal set would actually be really really valuable on her because when she loses that hp it's hard for her to heal up just based off of life drinker so no, the mastery so you know giving her a little bit extra way to heal back up would help her survive a little bit longer a full 50 turns maybe not as i have her built right now but you can see the potential there to do so uh, but look at across the board really good numbers anax doing 17 million damage without any poisons coming from him i mean that's an incredibly good result basically the same amount as aethar at 18 and a half and aethar had all those poisons helping to add to that damage number right so you can see there's more than a few epics out there that can be incredibly helpful for you. Anax, I would actually really consider bringing into your main team, regardless of what it is. Now, he does have a passive ability you have to be careful about if he goes too low on HP. So he's maybe not the most ideal stun target, but he's still a great champion and going to be really good for your clan boss teams generally. So somebody I do still recommend bringing into your teams where possible. You just want to try to make sure that he doesn't go below 10% health. If you can do that, he'll work perfectly for these squads. But yeah, I mean, I think really good result overall. So let's take a quick look at the stats and what I've built on them. Now you'll notice there aren't going to be any crazy sets on them. The only thing we're trying to do with this is get to the numbers we want, right? We want to get to the right number of speed, the right amount of attack, which there's no limit to. We just want to build that up as high as possible. Same thing with the crit damage. We want to try and hit that 100% crit rate and enough accuracy to land our debuffs for Ultra Nightmare, which is going to be between 230 and 250 accuracy. So that's all we're trying to do. I don't really care what sets we're using. The only reason why we use sets in general is just to help get to those kinds of numbers that we want. So we have Aothar here, amazing champion, one of the best poisoners really in this game, and he hits so hard. He's actually really good, even in like dragon runs and stuff like that. Now he's got 5,600 attack just about, uh, 173 speed, and 247 crit damage with 240 accuracy. Plenty of stats there. He's going to be able to hit hard. He's going to make sure he lands his debuffs, and he's going slowest in the team, which is usually the spot that goes for the debuff block. Locker, but in this case, it's going to be Aethar. Now, like I said, doesn't make a great stun target at that speed. Ideally, what I'd do is I'd swap him and Doom Priest as the leader. But if I do that, Doom Priest gives a speed or so I would have to obviously adjust their speeds to make it work. So there's something to keep in mind. But that's why I made the adjustment as I did here. Now, one thing we could do is I could always put Chani or an axe or somebody else in the lead, and then we wouldn't have to change the speeds. It would all work just fine. I just kind of kept Aethar in there because why not? He wasn't getting stunned anyway. Um, and so it's going to be a really good result for this. Now, one thing I will point out, I think most of these champions have the defensive masteries instead of uh, support masteries. That's definitely a way to go that would improve our numbers here across the board. But like I said, you know, I didn't feel the need. When you're already one king nightmare, there's not really a huge need to swap all of that stuff out. Now, moving on, we have the best damage dealer on this team by far. And he's just incredible champion is Anax. And somebody that if you have the opportunity to bring in your clan boss team, you probably want to seize that opportunity. This guy smacks so hard. I mean, you're seeing his A1 skill doing like 150,000 damage on a two hit ability. So like 300K off that one skill. It's just incredibly good numbers. We did need decreased defense and weaken up for that. And that's the only issue with him is he's not a super consistent decreased defense champion, especially if you're not taking two turns uh, every attack, or every if you're not taking two attacks every turn, or you're not you know bringing somebody else to put, bring that debuff up. It's definitely going to be problematic. But we had him 174 speed, uh, almost 5,900 attack, 264 crit damage 240 accuracy so he's hitting really hard enough accuracy to land his debuffs it's really all that we need out of this and then moving on of course we have the champion that makes all this possible because it keeps us affinity friendly i'm talking about doom priest and she's an amazing champion all throughout this game i've used doom priest in doom tower a bunch of different areas but really great for this type of a comp because it keeps you affinity friendly doom priest also brings an increased attack buff which is great um, and can hit decently hard now obviously you know i haven't doom priest in a toxic set i think if if I were to rebuild this team, I would probably bring in another poisoner and 
take Doom Priest out of that toxic set, but that's definitely a good way to go if you don't have poisoners on your team. Uh, and it doesn't affect, obviously, you know, the build that she's in. We don't need actually, we don't need resistance. All I built on her was as much attack as I could, about 4K. That 186 speed is really important. So she goes at the top of the order every turn, and then 230 crit damage, 100% crit rate. And then, of course, we have Chani, who is a phenomenal champion, uh, really good and really hits hard, which was really fun to watch for this because you don't see Chani used in many clan boss teams these days. Um, but yeah, obviously, the HP burn, the buff extension is really great. The fact that you don't need to build 100% crit rate, you see I have 86% on her because the accuracy is going to add to that. And she gives herself an increased accuracy buff, which means I really only need about 80 85 86 percent crit rate at these accuracy levels that i have on her now we have 5700 attack 288 crit damage so we we're able to transfer that crit rate directly into crit damage and get those damage numbers to go really high and then of course last is uh hellcat who is phenomenal champion absolutely love the hellcat 5500 defense 245 crit, crit or speed i should say the crit damage is high the accuracy is pretty good at 230 enough for us to land our debuffs and as i said you know getting that speed is really the crux after that i'm just trying to build the defense and the accuracy now if i can build damage like i did here i want to but survivability is going to be more important so the most important thing when building your hellcat speed obviously you got to get to that number but then after that you want as much defense as possible if you need the debuff the weakened debuff that he brings which is great definitely want to add that accuracy into it next and then the very last thing you bring in is the damage he can hit hard but it's more important to make sure the other four champions survive than it is to make sure he hits hard. So when you're building this for your first time, you know, that's what you want to focus on. Speed, then the defense, that makes the shield bigger. After that, the accuracy, and after that, you bring the damage. So that's the team. I thought it's a very it's very fun to kind of build this team because it's so easy to swap champions in and out based off what you want to do. And it's really easy actually for me to test champions too, because I'm only having to build them to like 170 speed or so. And I can really kind of swap them in and out and see what kind of damage they do, how effective they are. And so if there's some champions that you guys really want to see, see how effective they are that I haven't shown before, you can go ahead and let me know down below in the comments. And maybe if I get an opportunity, I'll go ahead and showcase this team with a few different other champions so we can see how they would perform i thought it was really fun to be able to see chani in this it's really cool to be able to showcase anax too and see his damage potential as well um and you know so it's kind of kind of fun little thing to be able to you know mix it up a bit here um but yeah really great team really good results and hopefully you guys got a little bit of insight on how to kind of build this and you'll notice i didn't talk much about the difference between nightmare versus ultra nightmare the only difference is you generally start one turn earlier so your setup is a little bit easier but after that, the requirements, the you know, the things you want to, you need, the way you want to build it, exactly the same. There's not really any difference there. So you know, as long as you follow the guidance on the website and visit that deadwoodjedi.com, make sure to look up that slow Hellcat unkillable team. It's very easy, and obviously there's some variants too with a four three champion in there, even a couple of them, and that can make it more uh, functional for the champions that you have on your account that you want to bring in and give you a little bit more variety as far as the approach that you would take to building a team like this. So definitely more than a couple ways to do this team, and it's a really good team. If you have Hellcat, you can build an killable. It doesn't take much more than that. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. This was really fun, and uh, yeah, till next we meet. I'm the Deadwood Jedi. Yes. <laughs>